Well, the Sierra snowpack was recently measured following the storms we saw through December and January. And today's weather extra meteorologist Darren Peck breaks down how exactly it's measured to give us more reliable data. Okay, by this point in the winter, you've heard a lot of statistics that drive home how impressive the snowfall in the Sierra has been. But I think this photograph might be the most impressive visual yet. That is a researcher from the Central Sierra Snow Lab just a few days ago, standing in the pit that they dug out at their snow course to measure the snow. And having spoken to them up there, I can tell you that particular researcher stands five feet seven inches tall. He's got to hold up the shovel. He's still not making it to the top. He is standing in 10 feet of snow at the Central Sierra Snow Lab. Let's do a little comparison on this. We're going to bring in our own little pillar of snow. So if our researcher is standing in 10 feet of snow, let's make our pillar 10 feet tall. And of course, when we do that, it goes out of frame. And by happenstance, I also happen to be five foot seven. So this thing is way out of scale for me too. Let's bring it back down because I don't have a shovel to hold and I just want to do this to scale. So if we take our 10 feet now on a ratio, you know, it's not like I'm necessarily 10 feet tall, but for the ratio on that, the important thing about snow in the Sierra when it comes to measurements, when you hear the numbers, when you hear the reports, they are not telling you how deep the snow is. That really doesn't matter. The depth of the snow can change wildly. Was it really windy? Did the snow get piled up? Was it a series of atmospheric rivers, so it was really wet, heavy snow, which is not going to pile up as high? Were they storms that were inside sliders that were great to ski on, very cold, but also very light, fluffy, and airy, which means the snow is going to be really deep? The numbers can be all over the place if you just measure snow depth. We don't do that. What we look at is the constant in the snow, which never changes, which is how much water is in it. If you want to get a good idea on a comparison, you want to take a look at the water. So what you have to do is you weigh the snow for one thing. That's how they do it up there. They weigh it because that constant will give you how much water is in it. Or you can melt it and see how deep the water is. There is a ratio in the Sierra when it comes to snow to water. How much water do you get in typical snowstorms? Well, let's say you had a storm that came through and dropped 10 feet of snow, rarely happens. Let's say 10 inches, because that'll probably be easier. The ratio in the Sierra is 10 to one, meaning for every 10 inches of snow that falls, when you factor in how fluffy it is with the air, you actually get about an inch of water out of that. So that's kind of a typical storm, actually, that'll come through. You get about 10 inches, and now it's about one inches. It's not always that way, but that's the average for the Sierra. That's very wet snow. And for comparison, this ratio in some place like Denver is 15 to one. So in order to get like, you know, an inch of water, they would have to have this column be 15 inches high because the snow in Denver, the storms are much colder and they're much drier. So the snow can pile up a lot bigger. So our researcher standing in 10 feet of snow looks really dramatic, but we know they didn't get 10 feet of snow in the Sierra this winter, they got 30. I mean, if you added up all the storms and put them together, that number starts to sound really dramatic. So now we've got to take our bar again from 10 feet, and we're not going all the way to 30, but we'll just kind of scale it for a second. So 30 feet of snow is what fell if you add it all up. But that snow doesn't stay at 30 feet uh, because over time, the air compacts out the water, the densities of it, it starts shrinking down. So what we do is we take that 30 feet and we compact it back down now to our 10 feet which is what our researcher is standing in. But that just threw off the whole ratio. That 10 to one ratio, that applies for individual storms. If you have a snowpack that's been sitting there for weeks or months, it compacts a lot over time. And our Sierra cement, which tends to keep a lot of water in it now, has an even higher ratio. And that's why we measure the water, by the way, because the snowpack level is gonna change wildly, whether it's individual storms or over time, it's gonna settle down. We didn't lose anything from 30 to 10. We still have just as much water there as we always had, but it's a higher ratio now. So let, let's bring this back up. We've got 10 feet of snow there. We do not have a foot of water right now. We'll bring in our scale again. And even though for individual storms, it, it, they come in a 10 to one ratio. But after several weeks and months of the winter, as the snow compacts now, if you have 10 feet of standing snow there, you actually have three feet of water. So this is one of the benefits of being on the West Coast. Our storms just come in much wetter. Sometimes it's not the most fun to ski in because it can be real sloppy. It's not as fun to ski in Utah or Colorado um, here. 
because their snow's lighter and fluffy and powdery and they brag about it. Uh, but our snow is much better for storing water. Speaking of which, if you looked at us right now in the middle of February, that's what our snowpack looks like. This is a high resolution satellite of the Sierra taken on February 15th. And in general right now, the Sierra is at about 100% of average for the all important April 1st date. So if it never snowed again, we've still gotten an average winter's worth of snow. That's good, but we need it to snow more because with the drought as deep as it is, you don't get out of the drought with average. You need to go above average. We did go way above average for a period of time, but the storms have shut off since then. And that brings us to another item here. If we take a look at the pattern that's set up across the globe, and you can kind of see where we are on this side, let's kind of spin this around and look at the Pacific. See that big red bullseye right there out in the Pacific? That's a center of high pressure, which as we go into the middle of February is actually in a very favorable location for snow because that center of high pressure is going to force all of the storms to go up and over. And as it does that, it goes around the long way and then slides down into California from the north. So that red bullseye right there as we look through the second half of February, while it doesn't mean we're gonna get very wet atmospheric rivers, it doesn't mean we're gonna get colder storms, which will be good to provide a little more snow for our snowpack. That's the way it looks now anyway. I'm looking pretty far down the road at that, but that seems to be the pattern and the way it's locked into the Pacific now. So hopefully we can come up above that 100% of average by April. That's this week's Weather Extra. Paul Hagen will be in next week with another one.